So here we are on another turn of Lepita. It's called Lep Leptus. Sorry. Uh, starting actions. Bostar. And we had uh, wherever the Doinker is back here. Do a little bit of refreshing his forces. But Bostar uh, healed his elephants up, preparing them for another long, uh, attack. Mago launched the mainline infantry. And here's what we see is that those lights, even facing phalanxes, you know, you can withdraw, but they actually did a pretty good job holding their own. See, one routed, but they routed a phalanx which had to keep running through them or else be destroyed. And another phalanx, uh, this was after the attack, it, realized ah, I'm not in a great shape and just kept pushing through. Uh, the other phalanx was held back by a couple of units. So e even that skirmisher type line, I mean, the feeling is, ah, they should fall back. It's not necessarily the case. These aren't terribly great, but they did a lot of damage to the, to the heavy. and It felt a little too much damage, to tell you the truth. First the javelins, then the actual engagement. And uh, then he moved over, Mago, and healed his elephants and launched them for another strike. And he's cleared most of the lights out of the way here. We got a couple of routing, but uh, other than that, he's, he's broken that line up completely. So, you know, it's been a great cost, but we're seeing these. Speaking of cost, I didn't record the values. Carthage took 14 on those elephants. The rebels took 8 on their losses so far, which are recorded here and here. But we got some more rebels dying quickly over there. And uh, we'll be going over to the rebel turn. They'll get one of their level, one of their uh, five initiative leaders. The rebel left flank in the uh, act of surging forward. The overall commander, and I should probably consider moving him, has just launched all his infantry from the chariots to there forward to fill in gaps in the line and then to uh, strike the elephants and the uh, Carthaginian infantry that went up first. They managed to wipe out with javelin throwing that phalanx that was routing in a very bad place. Now that surge forward didn't do too much. It got rid of a couple of elephants, though, that we see over here. Um, and definitely pushed a couple of the light infantry that had advanced back. There's not much there, though, for Carthage. They're largely broken now in, in that section. We saw, well, the elephants broke away the lights. Well, now the heavy infantry has come forward and knocked out both the Carthaginian elephants, for the most part, still one here, that's it, as well as most of that light force that was up there, and that's leaving it to, well, these are in the back, uh, these are probably going to rally before we get down to, to the, uh, the really questionable stuff, but still, there's not a lot facing uh, the rebels on their left flank. Hanno launches his uh, heavy, er, <laughs> some heavies, some mediums, into the fray. Couldn't get everybody in because the elephant's still in the way. Uh, largely broke the lights, and even some of the heavier units went fleeing. So, we're seeing a, a pretty big gap in the line here where, uh, for the rebels. We'll see how that develops and we're back on a rebel action. They only have a couple people left sort of on their cav side and the chariots and over here where they probably want to stiffen things a little bit. A little bit of intense action happening down here. The Numenidian cav came in, drove into uh, some of the peltists that were scattered out, out in front. They pushed them back, no question there. That's not too hard. But then they got trumped so that they couldn't do a follow-up. And uh, the rebel cav, and 
first one of the chariots moved forward and scared one of the cav away. And then the rebel cav moved forward and made a number of flank attacks. Now those weren't terribly effective, mainly because the Numenidian cav is so good and these Libyan cav are not at the same level. However, they were going to go for a follow-up attack, maybe bringing a chariot in to the pinned unit or pinned units and really finishing them off. They got trumped as well and the Carthaginian levies moved up. It was a failed, uh, Hamilcar failed his momentum. So we've got one unit left, which is Mahrabal's cav. Well, Bostar managed to launch first his cav, driving away some of the lights and then the elephants to finish the job off. Cav are now positioned on the flank of the, uh, the rebel Numenidian cab, which should cause some serious problems over there. This guy, for example, is pinned. He can't change facing because he's in a zone of control and he can't get out of where he is. So he may have some serious problems. And then we'll see the rest of the line may be in trouble as well, just as that disintegrates. Overall, we see a lot of routing rebels, and this whole center's collapsed completely. We thought the Carthaginian center was kind of weakened. Well, that's been shored up, and now the rebel center has just dissolved over on the right flank. Things are sort of in that chaotic stage uh, as the cav begins to get committed there. And we'll see how that turns out. Right now, I would say it looks like a slight rebel advantage, but it's hard to tell. Those Numenidian Cav are pretty good. <sighs> Losses. Painful. Yeah. 2, 4, 6, and 14 is 20 for Carthage. Putting them up to 34. Not a lot here. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 32, 38, 49 losses for the rebels. Bring them to 57. They're about half there. And the uh, Carthaginians about a third of the way. The real, the real tough point here is trying to hold this together because there's a lot of points heading off the board right now. Uh, probably not enough to break the rebel army quite yet. But again, this is the same kind of situation as in the last game the Carthage faced. You know, you got to save those or else you're going to lose. But if you spend your effort saving them, the rest of your army is then susceptible to attacks. It's a tough call when you have that many units routing unless you have, you know, one of those godlike leaders. Uh, certainly Pyrrhus was able to, you know, turn his entire force around time and time again. And you'd see that with Hannibal as well. But here... There's just nobody good enough, uh, you know. They're looking at about 50-50 on each rally they make. So maybe it's not even worth trying. Maybe it's worth just taking the losses and trying to hold together the units that are there. But that's almost enough losses, I would guess, to break the army. It's just a hard choice either way. Well, uh, we open things up with uh, Mayo, uh, with Mr. Magoo hitting... He basically just was rearranging his own forces. Actually, we opened things up with uh, butt cheese down here, rallying something, uh, improving something, and filling the line. But Mr. Magoo uh, did his job. Just kind of moving around. He did one attack down here, which was successful. But then uh, Bostar got several uh, continuations as well. And he also was rallying forces, but he launched attacks on the final phase, smacking into the line here and driving it a little deeper, and moving forward with some infantry and some elephants, driving the rest of the lights out of the way, uh, kind of widening. Yeah, there's only a couple of units holding here, otherwise there's a big gap going through here. Uh, and no matter what, there's a gap right here. Um... Got a decent number of deaths due to pursuits and the like that occurred. 
not cav pursuit, just infantry smacking into routed units. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm cheating or not with somebody like Mahrabal. You know, he's Mark Numenidian cav. He was in command of the heavy cav. Could he command other things as well? It's never very clear to me. Sometimes scenarios are very clear. They say this person can only command these forces, and that's fine. But in this case, that doesn't seem to be the case. Uh, this guy is limited. I may have cheated with him, too, to only the Numenidians. Uh, but, and, and the Romans have their own special rules. And initially, I was violating them all the time. I'm not sure how much difference it makes, but certainly he ran over and took command of some elephants. Maybe his high... Uh, range doesn't really apply if he's commanding things other than his calf, which he can always command all of in this scenario, so I don't know, <laughs> you know, uh, kind of the kind of thing you can decide before actually playing. I didn't really think about it too hard. The uh, might of the chariots has been unleashed. Um, this guy leading the, uh, the cav and the chariots over on the rebel left flank managed to get a chariot attack off here and another one here. The problem with the chariots is they have ridiculously low tactical quality. They have a two. That means if they roll a four or higher on first engagement, perfectly healed, ready, haven't taken any missile hits or anything, they route. Um, and we see that with one of them. One, and these were flank hits, whatever. One of them managed to get in and drove the uh, cav away. Much more impressive, the uh, Libyan cav managed to smack some of those Numenidians around and drive some off. One ended up down in the pursuing box after having destroyed one. Uh, I still have to check to see if he gets a continuation, and he does not, which means things are going to go back over to the Carthage side. Why that's important, uh, he wanted to trigger this side off because when he looked at, uh, the rebel looked at the different positions where he could launch an attack, he could launch one over here, and this might be important to try to get away from uh, the cav on this side, but He's going to probably get to go before Mahrabal does because of leadership quality. Mahrabal's too good. <laughs> uh, of course, Mahrabal could trump in and, and try to uh, go before him. But moving over here, it meant that uh, he wanted to go before uh, this guy, who's Navras or whatever, uh, got a chance to try to extricate his new Median calf, and he managed to do that. Now, you can trump someone who hasn't gone yet. So, for example, I could have made an attempt to trump this guy with either Mahrabal or uh, with this guy, Navros. But doing so doesn't take away their turn. They still get an action. So it's a less valuable kind of trumping than trumping momentum. I generally stay away from it, but in this case it might have been worth doing fire Mahrabal off. Well, then we go back here. See, and the people who are who are bypassed only get one activation, but that's not that big a deal. It was that first strike that was going to be important. The thing I did learn, though, is those chariots are so iffy whether or not they work at all. Uh, if they do, they're potent. They've got very, very good combat values. Although... It's even possible that they will route with those good values just because they have such a low tactical quality that if they're hitting good quality units, they may take more quality hits than the thing they're hitting. So it's kind of tricky. They have the archers on board, which is kind of cool too. But All right, let's see what Carthage can do. Well, the Numenidian Cav actually cleaned up the whole area. Uh, they rode around smacking the uh, Libyan Cav in the rear, or in the flanks, 
uh, up here, over here, we still got the chariot here, which luckily wasn't put in a zone of control, so it didn't have to check quality to see if it routes, which it probably would have. And he also managed to rally a couple of other units, but we see the units that were successful are now off pursuing. Uh, we got some more death over there. Well, uh, the rebel right flank cav is trying to smack up the heavy cav, the uh, sacred band stuff. That's a tough fight. Uh, they're winning more or less, although outnumbered. You'll see. We covered them. Got another one retreated off the map for another cav death. Uh, another one's routing. This one got pulled in. But here, you know, even with the flank attack, he pushed him hard for a second attack. Uh, and, you know, he's becoming tired. Now here, we're also seeing the effect that I was talking about before. This guy's listed as Numenidian Calf. Is that all he can do? I don't know. But he rallied a couple light infantry. Um, probably when they're listed with, with that on their, on their counter, even if it, the scenario doesn't specify, I should be restricting them, but in this one, there'd be almost no uh, rebel leaders that could move the infantry then. There's just two, really. Uh, and one of them, oh, this guy starts with Greek mercenaries, so nobody would really be able to move these. He should be limited to just the Greek mercenaries, which is, you know, maybe two units. Uh, you know, if it's not specified, I, I have to give them the benefit of the doubt in something like this. And that's what I've been doing. Uh, some of the scenarios are very good. So, for example, this guy says Numenidia, but he is specified in the scenario as only being able to move the Numenidians, which works fine for me. I can remember that, I think, most of the time. All right. Uh, since that was... A rebel phase we're going to be going to Carthage and I think they only have one leader at rank five there's uh, Hanno back here with all these levies I'm not sure what he wants to do with them he may need to use them as a follow-up for the elephants there this is one of the more solid pieces of the rebel line so I think reinforcing that as I've done here where there's a solid piece of course there's nothing in the way here, so that seems kind of fair. Well, we had an early die roll of doom ending, which for the turn, which may, may be the game, which means and I forgot to move this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, Carthage didn't get to push as heavily as they otherwise might have. Uh, Hamilcar, I believe, didn't get to move at all. Mahabal didn't get to do what he was going to do, whatever that was. So some significant forces didn't get to act because of that. From the other side, a bunch of the routing units that were back here for the rebels didn't get rallied. Uh, some of them did. See, this area was handled with our fearless leader, Matho, who had the die roll of doom. Let's see what the points end up as, because we got kind of a pile here. For Carthage, to begin with, we've got 20 points, putting them at about the halfway point. And let's see if there's enough here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 16, 22, 28, 40, 52, 55 points. That doesn't sound good. Uh, 5 and 7 is 12, that's 112, that's going to be over the line. So, the Rebels lost at this point. It's one of the things that happens in this game, right? Uh, comes down to a die roll? Well, not really. I mean, they didn't have a chance anyway. It was just really a matter of, did it go another turn? Because another 50 points of Carthaginians was not going to die. And the units that were routing might have come back, but it might have meant more than one more turn. But still, it was pretty clear where the victory was, was heading on this one. 
All right, I'm gonna send this one up and hopefully uh, do something not SPQR next. Um, I'm not sure what, probably something moderately light.